Praise the Lord. Thank God for yet another opportunity to share God's word. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, Bible study lesson today title, I should say, is Who Are You? And when I ask the question, who are you? Uh, who are you in Christ? You know, what do you know about yourself? What do you know about Christ? And uh, is what we know about Christ determines who we actually are. So I ask the question one more time. Who are you? Father, I thank you for this privilege, this opportunity to share your word. I thank you in advance for as your word goes forth in power, might, and spirit. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the deliverance. I thank you for setting the people free. Father, I thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share your word, Lord God. And I ask as again, as it goes forth, Lord God, that it will impact people's lives, Lord God, that people will be changed. And we thank and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Who are you? As a born again believer, I guess the question is, who are you? I'd like to turn to Matthew's chapter five. I want to read verses 13 through 16. The word of God reads in Matthew five, beginning at verse number 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoning? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Verse number 15, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. 516 reads, it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. And actually, when you look at the caption, the title, when you look at Matthews 5, 13 through 16, it's called the similitude. In other words, similitude of God. We talk about the likeness of God, an expression of who God is. And that's what uh, we see, the similitude. And so, again, we begin with looking at you are the salt of the earth. And when you think about salt, we're not talking about the salt that right now you would put on your food we're talking about you as as a seasoning you as one who's impacting uh, other people's lives you know as born again believers if the scriptures say that we are the salt of the earth and so if i am the salt if you're the salt as born again believers we should have an impact we should bring a flavor you know Salt uh, uh, enhances the flavor of things. Salt also preserves things. And so if you and I are called to be the salt, that means we should be playing uh, major roles in, in people's lives. And I look at, again, it says, and how should it be seasoning if it loses its flavor? Uh, in this particular time period, when you think about it, pure salt never uh, lost its flavor. What happened was once they would mix salt with other different ingredients, then it would lose its flavor. Then it became uh, pretty much useless. And the only thing it was good for was to be uh, thrown out and you say trampled underfoot. So when you think about that, uh, some form of salt, if you would put it on the ground, it would actually, you know, kill the grass and, and weeds and all those kind of different things. And so that was the only uh, uh, use that it could be because it had lost its flavor. Think about you and I as born again believers. Think about you and I as people of God and we're called to be the salt of the earth. If, if we, in fact, lost our flavor, how could you uh, have an impact on somebody's life? Because they'll be looking at you and they'll be questioning, you know, where you are and what you're doing. And so, again, real salt does not lose its flavor, but it continues to preserve. It continues to enhance. And we don't want to be like this salt here where it says it's good for nothing except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. In other words, nothing except for uh, an area maybe to help the vegetation to die. And so uh, that's not really the usefulness of, of true salt. And so if you and I are in fact the salt of the earth, and that's what it says, you are. And I ask the question, who are you? And as born again believers, the word of God is telling us that we are the salt of the earth. We are, uh, uh, should have a uh, 
or be put in a position of where we can impact other people's lives. We should be walking a certain way. We should be sanctified. In other words, sanctified being set apart. We should be set apart for God. We should be set apart for God's service. Praise God. Again, if in fact we are called to be the salt, then begin to preserve one's life, begin to enhance, begin to give some flavor to somebody. Praise God. Verse number 14, it says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. When you think about that, and you think about a city that's up on a hill, that city sits up and pretty much no matter which direction you come in from, you will be able to see the city because it's up on a hill. And so if we are called, praise God, to be the light of the world. And that means that the light that we have, it should be a light that can, can shine no matter which, which direction people come at us. They should be able to see the light shining. In other words, if, if, if my light, uh, if I'm out there, I shouldn't be trying to hide it. I'm, I should be in the, in the forefront. I shouldn't be behind, but I should be in front. And when you look at this, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. And the reason it can't be hidden is because it's up on a hill. There's nothing uh, that that can be put there that will keep one from being able to see and or recognize it. And I believe that in the lives of born again believers, we need to be careful that we don't allow things to come in and cover up who we are in Christ Jesus to not let people see our, our, our true identity, not let people know exactly who we are. And that's because uh, we're not hidden. We're not allowing anything to distract us. We're not allowing anything to come in and prevent others from being able to see us. And that's the example that's given here. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. And if I can't be hidden, that means I got to be out there. That means people should see me. Now, that also means then that that you're going to be visible where even the enemy or even those that don't like you, even those that don't uh, have the, the same desire for you, but they will be able to see you and praise God. That's where we rely on God to protect us. That's when we rely on God to keep us. However, we need to walk in the calling with which he has called us. And he says, you are the light of the world. And so being the light of the world, praise God, we stand out. We are there where, glory to God, people can see us. Verse number 15, it says, Nor did they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Picture this, being in the house and you have a lamp, praise God, that has just been lit. Well, you take that light, yeah, it's dark in the house, you take that light and you go and you cover it up. No, you don't cover it up. In other words, you put it up in a spot uh, in the house so that everybody in the house can benefit from it. And so if I am a light, praise God, I don't want to be covered up. I want to be put in the position so everybody around me can benefit from what I know, benefit from what I have. And this is what the word of God is saying right now. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a light stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. In other words, with what I know about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I don't want to keep it to myself. I want to be able to share it. I don't want to go in and just uh, praise God just uh, inside the doors of the church or, or inside my home. I want to, when I go out, when I go to work, when I go to the grocery store, when I'm out, period, go to the gym, whatever uh, place it may be that I would go out, I want to be able to let my light shine. I want to be able to be put in a position, praise God, so anybody and all that's around me will be able to benefit from the light that's shining from me. Praise God. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Think about it from this particular perspective. You and I, when we go back and when we look, especially some people who uh, in our past life, when we were doing some things that we didn't have any business doing before we got saved, glory to God. And it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. 
In other words, those things that you're doing now, those things that's beneficial for the kingdom, those things right now that honors God, those things that glorify God, let people see you doing those things. Let people hear you talk about the goodness of the Lord. Let people see and experience your love that comes from knowing the goodness of the Lord. And when you do that, it says that they may see, <clears throat> excuse me, your good works, because now they see something that's happening in your life. They're, they're hearing something that's coming from you right now that was totally different from uh, who you were when they uh, used to hang out with you. Let, let's, let's look at it from that particular perspective. And so now they see you differently. And it says that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. In other words, now as they look at you, they say there's something different about him or her. I, I, I hear and I'm listening to the way that they're speaking. They're speaking differently. Differently. They don't want to go over here and do this. They don't want to go over there and do that. And they're not saying that they're better than anybody. But what they're saying is they're better than those particular situations that they used to be involved with. And so now they can begin to glorify God in heaven because they're saying, I know that it had to have been a, a God a God situation that, that changed you and I. It's a God situation that allowed us, uh, allows us, I should say, to be where we are today, to be doing what we're doing today. And that's where we've got to get to. We've got to get to that point to where people can see, praise God, as we started the salt. People see light. Uh, we don't hide the light, praise God, but we put it out so that everybody can benefit from it. And then we let our light shine. We let our work shine. We let our words speak for themselves. And then we let people see and know that it's the goodness of God. It's the reason why we've changed. It's the reason why we see things totally different. It's the reason why we act totally different. When I said in Matthew 5, 13, 16, it talks about the similitudes, which means the likeness. Um, and that's the Greek expression of God's likeness, similitude. And so I can definitely uh, look at it from this particular perspective. James 3 and 9 says that we were made in the similitude of God, meaning uh, people, uh, born again believers, we're all made in the likeness of God, in the image of God. Praise God. And so if we're made in the image of God, we're made in the likeness of God, then we should be impacting uh, other people's lives. We should be put in a position where people know and see and can say beyond any doubt there is something different about him or her. The changes that take place, that, that have taken place in, in our lives, they should see it. They should know that it's different. They should know that it's a new experience. Praise God. Glory to God. Genesis 1 and 26 tells us that man and woman are uh, created in the image and likeness of God. And so if we're created in the image and the likeness of God, that means then that uh, the scripture says, God is love. He who knows God knows love. And so if we're created in the image and the likeness of God, then there should be some things that we should be doing. There should be some things that we should be saying. We should be put in a position, praise God, again, where people are being blessed, where people are being encouraged, where people are being lifted up. Why? Because if we're in the likeness and the image of God, then we should be acting as such. Praise God. And so, again, when I think about, as I started in 513, the salt, uh, pure salt will maintain its flavor. Pure salt will, again, it will preserve or it will enhance. And so if you and I are called to be the salt and we're made in the image of God, we should walk as so, praise God, we should talk uh, like we are made uh, in the image of God. First Peter 3 and 15, it reads, it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. In other words, when I looked at this, <clears throat> if I'm talking about being salt, then I go back and I look at 1 Peter 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart, set apart, praise God, and always be ready. In other words, when that person or persons come and they say, uh, you know, I know where you've been, I know what you've gone through, and yet you have peace, yet you have joy, yet you are living and, and reacting a certain way. 
what is it? And that's where it is, where the scripture says, where we should be ready to give a defense to everyone who acts a reason for the hope that is in you. In other words, you begin to tell them, you maybe you tell them a little bit about your testimony. You tell them about how you've been delivered. You tell them about how you've been set free. And then once you begin to tell them that, praise God, you give them uh, uh, some hope. You give them uh, a, a chance to, to know that it's possible. Praise God. If God could do it for you, God could do it for them as well. But here's the key. When I look at the last part of this verse, it says, Everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. In other words, uh, the meekness is, 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 is a sense of, of, of humbleness, praise God. And that fear is a reverence for God, is, is allowing people to see and know that it had nothing to do with any of your works, but it had everything to do with the love that God has for the world, with the love that God had that he gave us his son, and then the obedience of his son Jesus dying on the cross for the sins of the world. And so when you look at that, again, the meekness, praise God, is the humbleness that, that you express it in and the fear and the reverence for Almighty God. You're recognizing God is not of your works. Ephesians says it's not of works that one should boast, but it's the gift from God. It's a gift of love. It's a gift that has been given to us. And it's a gift, praise God, that we really can't earn. Uh, it's a gift that we really didn't even deserve. However, because of God's great love, the scripture talks about him making the ultimate sacrifice by giving us his son, Jesus. And Jesus is obedient even unto the death of the cross. Praise God. And so, again, when I look at uh, Matthew 5, 14, being a light. If I am the light, again, I need to be in a position so people can see me. I need to be in a position. Sometimes that means you need to be in a position of authority. Sometimes it means you need to change and stop doing what you've been doing. Maybe the way you even uh, uh, share certain things, maybe we need to change that. But we must be in a position where we can be the light. Glory to God. 15, again, uh, don't uh, let your light be covered up. Praise God. Get out, expose the darkness. Light exposes darkness uh, in the natural. If you uh, turn on the light, it automatically exposes whatever is going on in the dark. And that is the purpose for you and I being the light of the world because we are called to expose the darkness. We are called to go in, praise God, and bring light. Hallelujah. And that light is indeed the love of God. And again, I, I think about it when that, that last verse in 516, and it speaks about how uh, you and I as born again believers are to allow people to see the things that we're doing. We want them to see, we want them to know if you're working on your secular job, at your secular job, praise God, your work ethic, the uh, showing up on time, all those different things, praise God. People should see those things. People should know that there's something different. You go to the grocery store, praise God, and, and somebody give you, you know, $5 a, a cha more change than what you should have gotten. You know, don't run out the door talking about, oh, I've been blessed. No, because that person still is going to come up short and they may possibly lose their job. And so a good testimony, a good witness would be at that particular time after you've counted up the money to give it back to that person and let them know that they actually made a mistake. This is how people can see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. But it's going to require, again, uh, changes to take place in, 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 in us. And we've got to live, praise God, according to what the Word of God teaches. So, again, let your light so shine before men that they may your, see your works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. So in other words, what they're saying is, man, I know that's God. That's got to be God. Uh, and I, you know, first thing most of the time people say when you bring something back, they say, oh, thank God, you know, thank God for your honesty. You see what I'm saying? See, God is getting the glory out of it. And that's what we want it to be. We want that to be in every situation imaginable that God gets the honor and the glory out of it. Colossians 3 and 17 says, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 
And so when we look at this, praise God, and we go back and we're thinking about Matthews 5, 13 through 16, whatever we do as Colossians 3 and 17 says, and whatever we do in word and or deed, do it all, praise God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And so what we want to be mindful of there, even over in the scripture there in, in Colossians, it talks about uh, whatever work we do, do it as unto the Lord, uh, not expecting a reward from man, but a reward from Almighty God. And so often, uh, whatever we do here, we want to do it because we want to get an attaboy. We want to get a pat on the back. But that's not what the scripture is saying. The scripture is saying that whatever works that we do, wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever we say, we want to do it unto the Lord. We want to do it to where God is honored and glorified in it and through it. And so be mindful, again, that where you and I are in this walk of faith as born-again believers, I go back to 1 Peter 3.15. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And all that we do, do it as unto the Lord. Sanctify our hearts, which means be set apart, be set aside. In other words, be committed to God's service. Be committed to doing the work of God. Be committed to loving. Be committed to caring. Be committed to spreading the word of God, spreading joy, spreading love. All of these things, praise God, will be beneficial for the kingdom. And unfortunately, I think the problem today is that we allow so many other things to come in is not really beneficial uh, for the kingdom. In other words, uh, once we begin to do those other things, we get sidetracked and then we don't have uh, the time to dedicate to kingdom living. We don't have the time to dedicate to the people that's in the kingdom. However, what we've got to begin to do is be mindful that those particular things are just distractions to stop you and I, uh, you and I, born again believers, from doing the work that God has called us to do. And so I say, let your light shine so men can see it. Let them see the good works and glorify your Father in heaven. They are saying, I know it's God because of the changes that they see. Don't pat yourself on the back. Give God the glory. You know, that's another thing right there when you look at that from this particular perspective. So often when somebody comes up and they pay you a compliment, the first thing you want to do is, oh, way to, way to go, attaboy. You know, you want all of those different things. Where's your, 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 your verbiage should be to God be the glory. In other words, man, you really look good doing what you were doing. You look good on the job. That was a good job you did. Uh, the way you handled that particular situation, it was really great. And the thing that should come out is to God be the glory. In other words, the work that I did, uh, the purpose for me uh, going the extra mile was so that God could get the honor and glory out of it. Now, the one thing that we always have to be mindful of, and we need to always share this with people, it is not your works, praise God, that saves you. After being saved, though, your work should be displayed. And so don't believe or don't start thinking that if you do good things, that that's what's going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. It's not your works. It's your obedience. It's your honoring and glorifying Almighty God. It's accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. But now works should be the evidence of your salvation. And that's why we want to be that witness. That's why we want to share our testimony. That's why we want to be there to encourage. That's why we want to be there to lift up. That's why when we were reading uh, the Word of God here from uh, Matthew's, uh, praise God, chapter 15, and it talked about uh, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. In other words, because of who we are in Christ Jesus, praise God, we want to be like that city that's set up on a hill because we want everybody to be able to see what's going on in our lives. We want everybody to be able to recognize that God is in fact who he says that he is, and most of all, capable of doing what his word says that he could do. So again, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. And one thing that I want to just uh, reemphasize before I begin to close this message, 
mean the, the similar to we're made in the image of almighty God, the image of almighty God. Think about that. If we are in fact in the likeness and the image of almighty God, that means that we should uh, live a certain way. You know what's so uh, uh, amazing about that? When you look at people today, it's kind of hard to really uh, uh, see anything that would indicate what we used to be or what we were. And that would have been with Adam and Eve in the garden before uh, sin, be before disobedience came in. Uh, but once we praise God, accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we begin to, to take back on those type of characteristics as it was in the garden. And so you and I, again, since we have accepted Jesus Christ, we take on the, 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 the kind of nature, the kind of characteristics of, of God. And God being a father, he would definitely want his children to be like him. He would want his children to love. He would want his children to encourage. He would want his children to be there to be supportive. He would want his children, praise God, to lift him up, to glorify him, to honor him. And that's what we're called to do. And so when we look at, again, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, we're talking about the similitude, the similitude, the likeness of God. Praise God. And so when we look at that and think about Genesis 1 and 26, it tells us that man and woman were, were created in the image and likeness of God. And so if you and I are created in the image and the likeness of God, we have a responsibility to glory to God, to allow people to see that image, to to understand the likeness, praise God. And that only comes because we have the relationship with Jesus Christ. And so now as we're speaking to them, now as we're living, now as we're walking this thing out, they can see and they can know beyond any doubt that it is in fact of God. Praise God. Uh, so salt and light are tools, or I should say something that should impact light exposes darkness, salt preserves, or enhances the flavor. And so if you and I, as born-again believers, are called to be the salt of the earth, we're called to be the light of the world, then we should be impacting people at such a high level that God gets the honor and the glory. Father, I thank you for this awesome privilege, opportunity that you've granted to me to be able to share your word one more time. I thank you for the impact that your word has had in and on our lives. And Father, for that person right now that's struggling in their health, I pray for healing. Person that's struggling in relationships, I pray, Father God, for deliverance in those relationships. Lord, those that are seeking financial blessings, Lord, ask first of all that we become better stewards of what you've already entrusted. And Lord, whatever other needs that need to be met, we just want to thank you for meeting those needs. Father, right now for that person or persons that don't know the saving grace of Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, Lord, continue to nudge and touch their heart. Lord, the scripture says that no one can come to Jesus unless he's been drawn by you. And Jesus says that he is the only way that one could come to know the Father. And so right now, Father, if there's one right now that wants to come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord God, that you would impress upon their heart and together we can repeat that prayer of faith. And I thank you for it in advance. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And if, in fact, you are that person of persons and you say, yes, I do want to uh, enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, you say, well, what is it that I do? What is it? Is some formula? It's not a formula. Praise God. It's a belief. It's a confession. It's confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. Not only did he die, but he was he was killed. Uh, he died and, and he was buried and he was in the grave for three days and he raised from the dead, praise God, and he now sits at the right hand of the Father. The scripture also speaks about making a confession. And so if you would like to do that, we can do that now. You say, Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. I believe that you accepted the death of Jesus for the sins of the world. I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me and through me for the glory of God. Jesus, today I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. 
Thank you for coming into my heart. Father, thank you for receiving me into your families. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And I say to you, welcome to the family of God. The scriptures say the angels in heaven are rejoicing over your conversion. I'm rejoicing over your conversion. The one thing, first of all, I suggest that you do, you get a Bible. I say begin reading St. John chapter 1. Begin reading and begin to understand the deity of Jesus Christ. And second, and I know it's very important that you find that Bible-believing, teaching church and become an active member of God's family. And so I say to the entire listening audience, I continue to ask the Lord's blessings on you and your family. May he continue to keep you, keep you excuse me, in his perfect peace. I love you. May God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.